Hey there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Thousand Ant, where we give you Unity tutorials, devlogs, and general game development advice from experienced indie game developers. On today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a short highlight from a live stream that I did together with Charles from Infallible Code over on his channel. So I'll put the link to the full live stream in the description down below. And I think if you're interested in programming, kind of best practices, thinking about games as software projects in the Unity context, I think you'll enjoy this interview. And generally speaking, I highly recommend the content that Charles is doing over on his channel. So I had a ton of fun talking to Charles and doing this. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. Let's check it out. Okay, when this, when this gets triggered, I'll create a button and hook it up the way I need. But yeah, you yeah. know, a lot of folks would just immediately just say, well, I, I, I know design patterns. I know they're super valuable. I know the bread and butter design pattern for UIs is MVC, which is really, it's more for web applications. Right. But this, I mean, this is, I think actually is a really, and this is maybe where we can add a little bit of value in this is like, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are, and I had this experience too, of reading about a lot of these design patterns, but then trying to bring those, to, I mean, my, the content that I make, and I think a lot, most of the content that you make is, is focused on Unity, right? Mm -hmm. Unity has its own paradigm and kind of, you know, uh, Unity has its own pattern that it's architected in, right? So yeah. now we're trying to kind of layer another pattern into this existing kind of pattern landscape it, yeah. it can be quite which is why i think that that sometimes people are like oh like you get a lot of folks who come in as developers who are like well in my day job i'm a web developer and, mm -hmm. and for my web applications using mvc all it's the all time mvc is, yeah is, is perfect and i'm super yeah. happy with that so i'm gonna bring that pattern into unity right and it's like well wait a minute like you know you may have some unique considerations there so i think that's an interesting interesting topic as well is yeah. is how do we you know translate these patterns into the kind of the unity universe and then also how much you know some people just use unity as a renderer right they're like yeah. i just totally rewrote all the software architecture i'm not even using components <laughs> and, you yeah. know which there are games that ship like that you know yeah, like yeah. commercial games they have certain needs and or a team that already knows mm -hmm. how they want to work and they want to just bypass the whole and you, unity is a great render you know it really yeah, yeah, it yeah, serves absolutely. it does it really well <laughs> totally totally yeah so that is a and that's an interesting question as well right it's like how how entrenched are you in your software design kind of methodology you might just want to just kind of right from the ground up and just at the end just kind of publish to unity's renderer and say render this you know yeah yeah um so there's a lot of ways to a lot of ways to go about it yeah well you mentioned something um so like, yeah, if I'm a web developer, you know, every web application, I don't say every web application in the world, but any modern web application, like if you were to build .NET Core web application using their layout, or if you were to go watch any tutorial, you use MVC, right? So it makes sense to lean into that. Okay, MVC, I, I understand that. That makes sense. It's tried and true, tried and tested. The yeah. problem with Unity, I think right now is that there is no tried and true. I mean, there. I think there's becoming one, and, and we could talk about that. But there's yeah. no tried and true overarching design or architectural pattern that you can lean into and say, "Hey, for Unity, I'm going to go ahead and use this." Now, I think oh, what you'll hear a lot is composition uh, over um, inheritance, and that's yeah. where if you look at Unity model behaviors, they're components. So you want to compose your game objects, meaning every every little bit of behavior has its own script. And what you do is you compose that. And that kind of leans into dots uh, or Unity ECS because the entity component system is an architectural design pattern where you comprise your entities of many components. So I think that's something that's sort of emerging now. And then the yeah. other thing is scriptable objects uh, where it's almost like you take your data and you, and you almost make it like a first class citizen. Um, and I think your latest video about enums kind of shows that off too, where it's like, yeah. hey, look, you, you're you're um, 
your types are going to be stored in this object, this strongly typed object, and that's going to be generated at runtime. So those are the patterns that are starting to emerge. And I think hopefully we'll see more of that um, where we have more of this level two content. Cause I yeah. think, I think that's going to be valuable. Cause like, honestly, as humans, like, we thrive on patterns, you know? Yeah, and yeah. It, it feels like every time I start a new Unity project, I have to rethink, okay, how am I going to approach this? There's no, like with a web app, if you told me to make, oh, you, make Twitter, we're going to make a, a Twitter clone or go make a Facebook clone or go make an Instagram clone. Uh, the first thing I would think is, okay, let me get an MVC project going. Let me get my database yeah. set up, figure yeah. out what my models yeah. are going to yeah. be. Boom. I don't have to think about anything else. And uh, I think Unity hopefully will eventually will get to that point where it's very obvious. Or maybe maybe it will never get to that point. And maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I think it's an interesting point. I think, you know, to touch on a few things you said, I think that the composition, composition over inheritance, <clears throat> not meaning never, ever use inheritance. Obviously, right. there are many cases where inheritance is useful for kind of, I would say for maybe your most abstract classes, right? Your most, mm -hmm. you're not abstract in the programming sense, right? But you're kind of uh, very foundational classes using some kind of light inheritance there. But where you get into, we have a weapon and then there's a sword that inherits from weapon and then mm -hmm. there's a fire sword that inherits from sword, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like you are really going to, um, I just feel like it's going to fall over. You know, uh, my experience is that, the, and, and as you mentioned with the dots paradigm coming in, it's really moving to a much more, an even more kind of atomic co component model, like this kind of true entity component model mm -hmm. uh, than what we had in the mono behavior world. Right. Yeah. And I think that for me, I just feel like it makes a lot more sense. And I think Unity is kind of wants you to go that way a little bit. And if you kind of just don't don't resist and, and, <laughs> and go in that direction, <laughs> that, uh, that you might be a happier person, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a talk that I really love, um, which I'll try to find and link in chat in a moment, by Brian Bucklew, who's working on Caves of Cud, uh, where he talks about this pattern in building roguelikes. Uh, which are very defined by, how, you know, like you might want to have a sword that's a fire sword and a nice sword at the same time, right? And then when you're trying to do that in inheritance, it's like it's yeah. instant fail, right? And <laughs> and he, um, it's a couple years old and it's not, uh, he actually did build Caves of Cut in Unity, but that's an example of a game where it's like, it's really just a huge C sharp engine and then unity just kind of displays it. Right. 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 Um, but, uh, that's like but a level three topic. <laughs> yeah, it is. But it's, it's honestly for me, I remember but, when I watched yeah. it, I was like struggling with some of this stuff and it kind of just, and I'm not, I'm, you know, you know, a lot of cases you don't need to go as far, uh, of that kind of atomic granularity, mm -hmm. but just thinking, Oh, okay. I probably don't want to build a huge tree of inheritance in unity. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. That would that was like okay because you know you get people are very dogmatic about all these things and they're like oh no 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 you have to have a, you have to inherit from this and you have to have a bunch of subclasses and otherwise it's yeah. unclean or something you know and it's yeah. like kind of getting permission not to do that for me was like a big yeah big I mean it's like there's there's a grain of truth to it like you know there's a grain of truth to saying hey MVC is a great pattern to use. Um, for UIs, it's just not a great pattern to use in Unity. So, like yeah. people, but you're right, people get dogmatic. So, I guess bringing this back, there's this there's this hole where uh, I think a lot of folks are kind of maturing, and it's interesting to see that that the whole community of Unity uh, users and developers are actually maturing together at the same time, which is why I think now you see a lot of these level two is what we've been calling them now. Uh, these level two t content creators. Um, not, I, I almost wouldn't even say that they're emerging. Like for me, I've been doing this for, I think three years now. And, uh, 
And I think a lot of the creators who are level two have also been doing it for about that amount of time. But as the community matures and starts to use Unity more and more and, and finally says, okay, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm graduating beyond following tutorials to do things like, you know, make a mini map or make a UI, a, yeah. an inventory um, for a very specific, specific use case. They're like, well, I want to make a, a mini map for my game. I want to make an inventory for yeah. my game. But my game has very different and unique uh, requirements. So I think bringing it back, there's got to be some fundamental, I think there's some fundamental truths about, you know, unity. And I think also game development that will eventually be the guiding factors into uh, where we land as far as how do you approach game development. And I think one of those obviously is, is composition. Yeah. And I was going to say that I think the reason that that is, is because I think game development specifically is one industry or practice or whatever that really requires good tooling because to make a game and I think this is something that I haven't really seen it so for me to say like I think it gets lost on a lot of people I don't think that's a fair statement but I just haven't really seen I've been the only person that I've heard who've touted this but when you make a game like for instance, let, let's take Skyrim for example. When yeah. you have Skyrim and that and and the company, I think Bethesda or whatever company is developing that game, the coding aspect of it is like I would say a smaller portion than the content creation. You know, if you yeah. if, if yeah. you say I want to add a new weapon, no one's opening up their code editor to add a weapon to Skyrim. They're right. adding it to some tool that some developer created internally that says, yeah. hey, look, if you're going to add weapons and content, you, you have I mean, to open they're probably up. adding it to a spreadsheet, you know. Could be, should, yeah. Like, like yeah. a lot of a lot once you get to these bigger games where there's a huge mega database of items or spells or whatever, a lot of it is just done in you see people using Google Sheets, you see people using Excel, right? Or it could just be a huge JSON file. Yeah. Uh, but I think that no, that, that I think and honestly, I think that this it's funny because just working on my cute space game, this is like mm -hmm. exactly the stuff I'm wrestling with right now is right. just getting building like, cause I, it's basically like an animal crossing like. And so I want to have a huge uh, database of items. Right. right, uh, right. And so I'm, I'm trying to think ahead and not make terrible mistakes now, you know, and, and make content authoring something that is, you know, not frictionless, but, but not like, yeah, that I literally have to go in and edit the source to, to yeah. add content. Right. Yeah. And I think that's actually where the, the scriptable object approach. I was just going to say your, your nicely. enums example is a perfect example. Why do you, yeah. why you're going to have to open up your code editor every time you have to add a new type, why not enable what I would call a game designer to come in yeah. and design the game? Totally. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, there's an interesting one there because I've had conversations with other dev friends where, where they're like, that pattern is good if you, if you have a game designer who's a non-programmer, but me, myself, I just want to write everything in code. And I think that is a, a matter of taste, right? Like you may just prefer, you're just like, well, it's just me. I just, I'm just going to type everything into Visual Studio. It's fine, right? Um, but I think for me, um, I'm a bad programmer, right? So I, and I know that, right? I'm, I'm, I'm accepted that. That's about good. Myself, right? That's good to, yeah. to say that. You know, it's good. <laughs> I think for I talk about the Dun and Kruger, Dun and Kruger curve. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like down here, right? Like, <laughs> past the point of thinking that I'm good. I know I'm not good. You know, like, well, this is that's like a healthy person. place to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I know that I need to like defend myself from myself, right? Like, just, What's that? Not. What's that famous philosophical quote? The more, the more I know, the more I realize I don't know. I mean, that's where yeah, I'm at. Exactly. I'm like, I guess I'm like, as a sub professional software developer, I am so acutely aware that there's so much that I do not know and will never know. <laughs> and that's, I think that's a, that is a, I feel like that's the start of wisdom, right? You're like, yeah. okay, I know that I don't know. I'm not going to be arrogant and like assume that I'm a genius and I'm going to always do genius things, right? Like yeah. I know that most of the time I'm an idiot, right? I feel like this is one of the things <laughs> that 
on like a philosophical level that, that programming teaches you, right? It's like, it's always your fault. You're always the idiot who like, you know, <laughs> failed to check if this was null or whatever it is and crash your application, right? Like you, it's always you who made a mistake. It's not yeah. the compiler. It's not a compiler <laughs> error. It's not the ID. You right? are the it's one you. human element in there. <laughs> yeah, you are the single point of failure that's always wrong, you know? So, so having kind of had my, my face rubbed in that for a couple of years, I, I feel like building systems that minimize me breaking things yeah. uh, and that where I have less and less chances to come in and break things is good, you know? Uh, yeah, and, for sure. Kind of. So there's like designer me and then there's, there's developer me and designer me just wants to be able to go in and plug in objects and move things around and, and, you know, edit. Yeah. Whether it's editing a text file or a spreadsheet or something and just do that yeah. in a way that's, that's not uh that's more frictionless and, but not have not be introducing a ton of bugs and breaking all my other systems because I forgot two years ago that I programmed this other thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, cause that happens, right. If you're working, yeah. especially indie scale develop. I mean, I think another thing that's interesting to talk about, right. Is, is the scale of development, the patterns are going to be really different, right? Like yeah. the indie scale development where it's like me by myself. Yeah. I'm kind of fighting against me from two years ago or like defending against me from two years ago more than I'm like trying to defend against other programmers on my team, you yeah. know, overwriting my public fields or whatever it is. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, you know, cause that's a lot of the time, right? They're like, you need to make your class protected and make everything private because some other programmer on your team is going to come in and write to those fields and break everything. Right. Well, it's like, well, I'm, I'm the idiot in that case. Right. And I just don't remember that two years ago I, I wrote all this code and yeah. you know, now I'm doing bad things to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So thanks so much for checking out that short highlight from my live stream together with infallible code. Don't forget to check out the full stream over on his channel if you're enjoying this kind of topic and this kind of discussion about these, what we're kind of starting to call level two best practices for, for developing in Unity and making games in Unity, please do drop a comment down below and let us know what you think about this or if this is something you'd like to see us explore further. For me, this is an interesting topic. Also, this kind of discussion format was interesting, so we might give that a try here. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing more of that. Please do drop a like on the video if you thought it was good and do consider subscribing if you're not subscribed already and turning on notifications so that you can be updated every time we release a new video. If you're enjoying this type of content, I've put a couple of other videos from our channel up on the screen for you to check out. I really appreciate your spending a little bit of time with us here and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.